Have you ever been in the middle of nowhere and gotten a flat tire? Man, I, I know that that sucks. That has happened to me, and it sucks. Maybe you're the type of person that likes to go off-road, drop your tire pressures, and then what happens when you get back on the road? Oh no, you've got to pump it up. What if you need to blow something off, clean something out? Just use compressed air in some way. Well, if you don't have onboard air, you are missing out. And that's what we're about to install on the Battle Wagon right now over at Mainline Overland. Let's go. First thing we do, of course, take everything out of the box, see what we've got. We've got a mounting plate there, a bunch of lines, a bunch of fittings, the pressure control module there, which we will explain later. That's rad. All this stuff comes together as a kit from Alvance. However, there are zero instructions, which is super freaking frustrating. So shout out to Alvance for dropping the ball on that. And now Pat is removing the cabin air intake, which does go up to the hood. It's kind of a convoluted thing, but I don't hate it. There's where it was. You can see all the free space in the engine bay. And then we start to tap and sort of make holes correct for the hardware that comes with this mounting plate. Now, this is not that much different than normal ARB compressor setups. The thing that makes this particular one different is that it comes with that pressure control module, which adds a layer of complexity to the setup. Of course, from there, we're going to attach the compressor to the mounting plate, drop it in and kind of get a feel for where everything's going to sit and lay just temporarily putting that intake box back in just to see where everything sort of falls. And despite not having instructions, Pat being a legend figured out exactly how the pressure control module was supposed to go together. We've got all that attached to the compressor itself. We got some lines set up. We got some fittings set up and now it's time to take that entire unit and drop it down into the engine bay. You have to get it set up outside of the vehicle because of the tight fitment against the fender wall. Once that entire assembly is secured down to the vehicle, Pat is feeding some wiring through this sort of balloon knot in the firewall to get things through into the cab so we can set it up and get it all properly wired and functioning. Is this how you impregnate a cow? <laughs> It's time now to get the front air chuck set up. Now, I did not want to drill into the bumper itself. I didn't think that was the right solution. So we're putting it straight into the bumper skin. There's gonna be one on the front, as you can see, and then we're gonna also put one on the back side of the van. Now, in order for the air chuck on the rear of the van to function, we need to run an airline underneath the van, tuck it in nicely in a safe spot, and then hook it up to the spot on the rear bumper. And as it turns out, the bracket that comes with the air compressor kit that I got fits nearly perfectly on the rear step that came equipped on my van. Now, Pat is pushing the towing wiring thing out of the way so that he can go ahead and mark those holes. But I thought that was pretty cool that it worked out really well. And of course, we then need to drill and mount the bracket in the rear before attaching that line. And now that the air chuck is mounted, it's time to trim the line to an appropriate length and get her fit into the rear air chuck and nice and secure. After a few more bits of wiring, it's time to get this thing buttoned up. The cow is pregnant. Time to move on to running the breathers. Now we are mounting these little breathers or air filters inside this intake because it is more likely to get fresh, clean air, which is good for the air compressor. We definitely don't want to be feeding dirty, nasty air into that thing from inside the engine compartment. Now, as Pat's installing the second filter, I will say this. We took the sort of furry cover off of the air intake box because it is often used as a nest for rodents. Being that I live out in the country, I travel all over, we took that thing right off, so hopefully that will sort of mitigate that being an issue. And as you might expect, those filters need lines going to them to feed the actual compressor itself, so Pat's doing that now. 
You can see the lines coming out of the filters down into the compressor and that center line going to the side is to the pressure control module. Now this is the thing that is going to allow me to control the air pressure without having to open the hood. I love that concept. Here's me explaining where the trigger wire is gonna come across the van and then down through the battery compartment and hook up to the S-Pod controller under the driver's seat. Doing that will allow me to turn on the compressor from the driver's seat or outside of the van from my phone via Bluetooth through the S-Pod. And then I can control the air pressure through the pressure controller with the air compressor kit. It's kind of a neat setup all in. And now that we got that buttoned up, I suppose you'll want to see how this works out in the real world. First things first, we got to turn that on. I'm going to talk over the van running here. It needs to be on to support this. Okay, so what I've got here is two lines that Pat put together and this T that's going to go into our air chuck here on the front. These are gonna to go to the side wheels. I'll go ahead and insert this. It's awkward to do on camera. There you go. And it's super simple. Just unscrew the valve stem. I'll set it up on the tire. And just pop that bitch on there. Okay, so I've got the ARB app out. I'm holding it near my face because the camera is defaulting to my face in focus. And it's showing 35. It's not turned on just yet. We're gonna go ahead and turn pressure control on. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the van is bleeding off pressure right now. You can see up here, it's currently dropping pressure. It's gonna drop it down to 35. So in the future, this is how I'm going to air down to a very specific spot. And you can set presets and all that sort of stuff. I'm not an expert on this app yet, but I think it's really cool. Let's let it go. I would say that this is not the fastest thing out there to let it bleed off like this, but you are in control. And the phone vibrates, and that is set at 35 on both front tires. So then all I need to do is bump that pressure up. Whoop. You can hear it already going to 60 PSI. And it's rocking and rolling. And again, it's pumping up two right now. It's pumping up both fronts. Now, the reason I don't have the rear connected right now is because the dual rear wheels are still on there. And uh, quite frankly, I don't have the adapters for all that because you gotta go inside and blah, blah, blah. But it is currently pumping up the fronts. 60 PSI on both front tires, just like that. Now, to me, that is pretty valuable. Not only that, but I'll be able to get an extra hose and just blow stuff off, which I love being able to do, especially when we're out in dusty, dirty environments, blowing off my camera gear, all this other stuff. It's going to be a wonderful thing. So to unhook it, one side. I definitely need to find a spot to keep all my airlines, like some kind of container, box, whatever, so I know what I've got, where it is, all that sort of stuff. But to be honest with you, I'm pretty excited about this. I don't even know all of the uses for it yet. And I also don't know exactly how to use the app just yet. Of course, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit like, leave a comment down below on how you use your onboard air. I would love to learn more about how I could use my own and of course get subscribed and as always thank you all for watching we'll see you soon